by me being a former kingpin, the average person think, by me being from the streets, I'm uneducated. So that's one of the big misconceptions about me. I went to Eastern Illinois University, and I'm a proud member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity. So most people would think that a drug kingpin is not sophisticated. But business people understand in order to run a multi-million dollar business that you have to be sophisticated. A lot of people just can't believe that a person from Chicago, a gang infested, gang cultured city that I'm not in no organiza organized organizations. So they say, well, how is it possible that somebody uh, can't plug in and get millions and millions of dollars? Guess what? Mental. Mental be physical all the time. Uh, Fluky was before my time, but from my understanding, he was not part of any organized organization. But the time when Fluky was out here, the gang culture and the, and the drug culture wasn't in cahoots. So when Fluky was around, they, they, of course, we always had gangs. But the gang members were gang banging. They wasn't trying to get money. When I came up, the drugs started hitting the, the drug, the, the gang members' hands. And then they, they started to combine the two. And uh, drug dealing and gang banging don't mix. It's two different mindsets, two different uh, objectives. But you have some people that are smart enough to fuse the two together and, 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 and use, the gang to gang, use the gangs to gain uh, money and gain uh, you know, security and so on and so forth. Then you have other people that just fell victim in because they just, the two just don't go together. So I say that to say that uh, Fluky, he, uh, he had power because he had product. And when you have product, you have power. And he was able to use that and leverage that. And I'm just speaking from the outside looking in. I never had no experiences with him, but I have mad respect for him because I know when it comes to this street stuff, he's iconic. And I would like to put, you know, uh, they did an article on me in uh, As Is Magazine, and they mentioned Fluky Stokes, Larry Hoover, and Nate Hill. And they say a person that deserved to be mentioned in that same breath is Keith Presley. That's me. So I would like to think that I'm an iconic figure in this city and a legend in this city uh, because of my deeds, actions, and how I stand, how I stood, and what I'm standing for right now today. Uh, Scarface is a fictional character. Keith Presley is the real deal. I'm the truth. I'm the message that I bring. I don't have a $10 story. I don't have a $25 story. I got a million dollar story that I happen to sell for $1,000. And if $1,000 is out of your price point, then you don't need to be going down to Gucci trying to get you no Nikes. So I'm not saying it to be arrogant, I'm just giving some correlations and some, so we can compare apples and apples and oranges to oranges. So $1,000 is not, is not chicken fee, it's, it's a lot of money. So the people that usually buy the book for me for $1,000, a person that know me and wanna know my story, or somebody that knows me and wanna support my movement, or somebody that's intrigued. Uh, also, I like to tell people that I'm not selling a book for a thousand dollars. I'm selling game for a thousand dollars. I guarantee the game that I'm giving in this thousand dollar book, you ain't gonna find an Iceberg Slim book. That's for sure. Because once again, those are fictional. This is truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So here's the simple math on it. Two dollars and seventy-four cents a day for three hundred and sixty-five days equal one thousand and ten cents. I take the thousand, you keep the change. Support a real one.